Before I dive into the word of God, just want to share that I've been having a blessed time in the United Kingdom. I came here for one month, then the Lord changed the plans and he said, I want you to stay here for another extra two months. So next Friday, I'll be going back to my country, Sri Lanka. And uh, it has been a very interesting and a very uh, a powerful time that we have, you know, the time that we've been here. That's something the Lord has also placed in my heart to share with all of you today. But before we go there, let me quickly share, you know, take about two to three minutes, and let me quickly share something the Lord was uh, placing in my heart to share with the body of Christ, very especially with uh, the group in Revive. I've been sharing this for the last uh, week. I've shared this twice about the season that is ahead of us. So that is the, the next 28 months very specially the next 28 months about certain world events that will begin to take place. You will begin to see a, a, a massive global food shortage in time to come. So be prepared, be prepared, don't, don't panic, don't get alarmed just because countries run out of food, you depend on your heavenly maker. Jehovah Jireh is our provider. If we trust in him, we will run out of no lack. We will have no lack in our lives, but it's, in, it's important for us to be informed of what the, the Bible tells us. The Bible wants us to be informed and God does not want his children to be ignorant. Now, last week, I think last Thursday, we, we, when we had our first session, we shared about how persecution in the body of Christ is going to rise. It's going to start rising and it will you know, gradually begin to pick momentum at one point. And about three days later, we heard about how a, a precious church in Nigeria, you know, a, a gunman opened fire and about 50 people got killed. A very similar incident in a different way happened in our country in Sri Lanka in 2019, where a couple of churches were bombed on Easter day. So these are patterns. And what we need to understand is the Lord is shaking nations. This is a time where God himself is shaking nations. Why? Because number one, people are not repenting. Let alone unbelievers, even believers, there are, you get certain believers who are not repenting of their evil ways. And there are people who are trying to play God. People are trying to play God. So does God need our permission to do anything? Absolutely not. He says in his own word that he will shake nations and this is what's happening. And with every passing day, we are getting closer to the rapture. With every passing day, we are getting closer to the rapture. So we need to be prepared as the body of Christ, as the bride of Christ, because Jesus is going to come back to his bride. Amen. Now, for those of you females, when you got married somewhere down the line, you, would have, you, you can remember, I'm sure, how well you got ready on your wedding day as a bride. How many things did you pay attention to? The same way we as Christians, we need to pay attention to our identity as the bride of Christ because he's coming back for a spotless bride. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we prepare ourselves for that, let us go into uh, today's word. And that is about something that is very much neglected in Christianity today. A lot of Christians, now today, I'm not going to, we're talking about unbelievers. We are going to keep our precious unbelievers, our precious brothers and sisters in that category on a side today. And we are going to look at our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who know the Lord, who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but they are still struggling because this particular area has gone very much neglected. And that is the area of deliverance. That is the area of deliverance. There are so many Christians, they don't know that they are having demonic oppression within themselves. 
and they continue their lives like that. After I came here, you can ask uh, Rami and Shanti, they will testify, they will tell you, and there are other uh, precious people in the group of Revive, they will also tell you. And more than that, there are people from outside that we got connected to, that we had the privilege of ministering to, like I said again, not unbelievers, born again believers who were oppressed by the enemy, who were having evil spirits inside of them. Let me tell you, becoming born again is something, but after that, you have to maintain your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Becoming born again does not make a Christian or does not exclude a Christian from coming under demonic oppression. Do you know that? Becoming born again does not mean that the enemy has stopped attacking you. As a matter of fact, the day you became born again, that's the day even the enemy had more interest in you because now you carry the reputation of Christ over you more than anyone else. Before I became born again, I came from a different faith because my dad was a Buddhist. So because of that, I was anyway in, you know, I was in, I was in the, 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 the playground of the devil. But when I became born again, it doesn't mean the enemy stopped all his attacks on me. After you become born again, that does not mean that the enemy will stop attacking you. As a matter of fact, he will be behind you more than he was be before. Why? Because now, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 20, you have become an ambassador of Christ. You have become an ambassador of Christ. And you represent Christ on earth. And a child of God who powerfully functions in the anointing and who powerfully represents Jesus on earth is a, it's a big threat to the enemy and to his kingdom. So you as a child of God, you must know that you are a threat to the enemy's kingdom, to him. Oh, no. Well, you do some music, sorry. So my precious people of God, you need to understand that this is a very serious matter that we are talking about. I can give you example after example from the Bible. Let me give you a couple of examples. In Mark chapter 1, when you read from verse 23, Jesus was teaching in a synagogue in Capernaum. So in other words, let's say you go to church on Sunday. Jesus is there in your church where you go to your local church, where you go to listen to the Sunday service. Jesus is preaching at a session, like a service like that. And Mark chapter 1, verse number 23 says, In the midst of fellow believers, there was another person there who had an unclean spirit inside of that person. Now, the amazing thing is, this person who had the unclean spirit inside of that person was in the midst of fellow believers. He was in the setting of a church, he was in a church setting. He would have probably been there for years and years listening to sermon after sermon without knowing that he was still carrying an unclean spirit inside of him. What happened? Because the, the anointing that Jesus was carrying was so powerful, it caused this demon, this evil spirit to cry out, to surface, to manifest. And Jesus dealt with the situation. Think how, you know, we, we have experienced all of this happening. Where, you know, demons have cried out. They have just cried out of uh, and left. Not unbelievers only, but believers as well. This is an extremely neglected area in Christianity. And after I came here, the Holy Spirit of God started telling me with, with one after the other when we started having or seeing results by having, you know, seeing so many deliverances from one person to the other. The Holy Spirit was also reminding me the importance of the ministry of deliverance. Do you know as a child of God, you can also experience what you call self-deliverance. But if you don't know how to do that, you can't experience self-deliverance. In the name of Jesus, as a child of God, you can also experience self-deliverance. And today the sad thing is you also get Christians who think that demons are non-existent. They think evil spirits are just superstitious beings. 
And the enemy is happy as long as the child of God thinks like that because behind that deception, there's so much the enemy can do. Let me, so today, I want us to pay attention to Mark chapter 1, verse 39. Mark chapter 1, verse number 39. It's also, this is a very good uh, uh, verse, even for pastors. Mark chapter 1, verse number 39. And Jesus preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and he cast out demons. Look at that. Jesus preached in the synagogues. Jesus preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out demons. Now, this is the important thing. You know, I, I, I pray that all of us, including me, that this message today will sink deep down into our spirits today. This is very important. Before you go and pray for a person who is sick, how many of you, let me ask this question, how many of you, Take a moment and try to discern what is happening inside of that person spiritually. How many of you try to discern if that sickness is actually caused by a demon? Are we making things up? No, if you look at the Bible, the Bible very specifically speaks about sicknesses that are caused by demons. If you don't believe me, I can shock you and I will shock you with scripture. Because scripture says so. And when scripture says so, we are no one to say that there is nothing like that. In Luke chapter 11, if you turn your Bible to Luke chapter 11, verse number 14. Luke chapter 11, verse number 14 the Bible tells us that Jesus was casting out a demon and it was a dumb spirit. Look at this. The demon, it was dumb. It was making these dumb spirits. What they do is they, they don't allow people to talk. And what happens? What happened? And it came to pass when the demon had left, when the demon was cast out, the dumb spoke. How is that? When the demon was cast out, the dumb spoke and the people wondered. If you read, now I just read the KJV version. If you read the Amplified Version, the Amplified Version puts it very beautifully and says that these spirits, they control people. They control people. Let me give another example. You know, I like sharing examples from scripture because that opens the eyes of believers. You know, as a, as a minister, as a servant of God, one thing I cannot do when I preach is I can't preach my opinions. My opinions are not, null and void. I have to defend everything that I preach from Scripture. So if you turn your Bible to Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, let's take from verse 10 onwards. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman, now look at this, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Wow, what a predicament. This woman had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years and was bowed together. If you read the Amplified Version, you will see, it says that it was controlling this lady to such an extent where the spirit did not allow her to straighten herself up. And Jesus delivered that woman. Now do you see how there are demons that cause certain sicknesses? This is why it's important when you go to pray for a person, before you, start, you know, lay hands and start praying immediately. This is also something that I have learned, you know, being a pastor for so many years now, I have learned with experience. You know, I, for, in order for me to preach like this, it didn't just, you know, fall from heaven. It took a long time. For the Lord to give me this revelation and to also experience this. See breakthroughs. See people being delivered. So remember, we are looking at a very deep, a very detrimental area which can become detrimental if it is neglected. And let me also say this. None of us can ever say 
that we don't need deliverance. Not even I can say that I don't need deliverance. Why? Because I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. So if we, if we think for a moment that we don't need deliverance at any given moment, that is a sign of pride already in our hearts. So somewhere down the line, you and I, we need deliverance. Now, this is why as a, as a servant of God, I always emphasize on the importance of having a strong relationship with the precious Holy Spirit of God. This is why it's important. Because if you don't have a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit, every single day you will need self-deliverance. You will need to keep delivering yourself. But if you have a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit, demons out there, they can see clearly the kind of relationship that you have with the Holy Spirit of God. You need to understand that. Demons can clearly see the kind of relationship that you have with the Holy Spirit of God. If you want me to prove that, again, I can prove that from Scripture. I believe this is in Acts chapter 19 about the sons of Sceva. What happened when they tried to you know, cast out that demon? The demon said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And what happened? The demon that was there in that person jumped into the person who was trying to cast it out. And the end result was even much more worse. So remember, you as a child of God, me as a child of God, we have to pay attention to our relationship in Christ, our relationship with the Holy Spirit of God every single day, every single day. And let me also tell you this, that is a relationship that can never be replaced by any other relationship. Let me explain it to you this way. The relationship that I have with my wife cannot replace the relationship I have with the Holy Spirit of God. The relationship that you have with your spouse cannot replace, cannot be much more important than the relationship that, that you have with the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit who helps even you and your spouse to be together. And the sad thing is today, one of the most neglected person in Christianity is none other than the Holy Spirit of God. You know, after we came here, after I came here, we have seen so many people being delivered. And like I said, these are not unbelievers. They were unbelievers. I'm not saying they were not, uh, no. But they were also believers. Now, let me give you a good example. About two weeks ago, we went and prayed for a, a precious lady who became born again, I, I believe somewhere in 2011 or 2012. And towards uh, 2015, she has got diagnosed with a condition in her lungs. Now, this is after she became born again. She said she became born again in 2011 or 2012. Somewhere in 2015, she was diagnosed with a very terrible condition in her lungs. So when we went to her house, she came downstairs with the greatest difficulty and she had a huge uh, oxygen tank next to her and, uh, and it, you know, her, there was a, like a tube connected to her nose. She was receiving oxygen through her no nostrils. She sat down and one of the first things she told us, now, mind you, this is a born again believer, okay? One of the first things she told us was, I don't want to live anymore. I just want to go. I'm so fed up. And for her to say something like that, she was not even, you know, not even 70 or 80, probably in her early 50s or mid 50s. And she was trying to grab hold of her breath. She was out of breath. So before we prayed, you know, me, uh, our brother uh, Ravin, we were there. So before we prayed, we took some time to talk to her. Because we realized this was demonic. We realized it was a demon who was controlling her. This, it was a demon who was making her behave this way. So we took some time to dig into her, to her, her past, to identify if she has experienced any 
evil thing somewhere down the line that oh probably would have opened a door for a demon to come into her life we understood what the root cause is and we address the root cause we cast out you no know, we commanded this uh, demon that was causing this lung issue to come out of her you know then after we prayed for her she didn't even realize that she said in order for her to walk with the oxygen tank being connected to her nose th through her no nostrils that the pressure has to be at 8 but when she sat down she had turned it down to 4 and she said before she gets up she has to put it to 8 after we prayed she just immediately got up and she started walking she walked so much in the hall and it was only about three minutes later she realized that she had not uh, raised it to pressure level eight and then she removed the 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 tube from her nostrils and she said she was not feeling she, that she was out of breath you know this is why the enemy is a liar if we open, you know, sometimes even as a child of God, if you open a door somewhere down the line, and if you don't close it, that will be an issue. Because if you keep that as an open door, that will be remain as an open door for the enemy to put his foothold into your life. Now, that does not mean that you end up losing your salvation. That's not what I mean. Okay. But we as children of God, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11, we must not be ignorant of the schemes of the enemy. Do not be ignorant of the schemes of the enemy. So somewhere down the line, accidentally, if you open up a door, you know, none of us are perfect. Somewhere down the line, you may end up opening a door for the enemy. You have to close that door. I have come across Christians who just sweep it under the carpet without put, bringing it under the blood of Jesus and they think they are covered under grace. They try to live their life like that and somewhere down the line, the enemy will come and you know thrash them left, right and center. I'm telling you because I have seen this happening to people and it's sad when it happens. I know a pastor from Sri Lanka, married, got into an extramarital relationship with a, with a young girl in the worship team, continued that uh, extramarital unhealthy relationship for long, for quite a long time, thinking that he was covered under grace. But after about eight months, you know, the enemy really gave him left, right and center. Everything got exposed, lost his family life, why? Because when things could have been easily nipped in the bud, when doors could have been easily closed at the beginning, when that does not happen, the more you take time to reconcile with God, what happens is you will only be widening the door for the enemy to come and attack you. You need to understand that. Like I said, becoming born again does not exclude you from coming under demonic oppression. Now let me, let me give another example. If you are a person, for example, if you feel that you, you become fearful every now and then, you know, from the time you wake up in the morning, the first thing that comes to your mind is, you know, when you think about something and you get scared. You need to understand that it could also be an evil spirit of fear that you have opened the door somewhere down the line. And up until that spirit is cast out of you, you will not experience freedom. You need to understand this is a very serious matter. Christians are struggling today. Christians are suffering today. When God wants us to function in his power through the Holy Spirit of God, one thing the Lord does not want his children to do is to be ignorant. He doesn't want us to be ignorant. He wants us to be discerning. He wants us to be discerning as a servant of God. As much as the Holy Spirit of God helps me to be discerning 
about others when I go and pray for them, I also must, I also should be discerning about my own inner state. Every time a thought of fear tries to come my way, I have to take my action against that. Every time a thought of doubt tries to cross your mind, you need to take your action against that. Because a little seed of doubt that gets planted in your mind over time can become big and big. Because everything starts in seed form. Remember, a little seed has great potential. This is why it's important for you and I to be discerning, to be discerning. Now, in order for us to be discerning, how can we be discerning? That's the important question. <coughs> Excuse me. How can we be discerning? Where does discernment come from? Who gives us discernment? What is discernment? If you take a moment and think to yourself, what is discernment? How would you define this word called discernment to yourself? You know, discernment is the ability of a child of God to know what is right from what is almost right. This is why it's very tricky. This is why the enemy is very subtle. You get what is right <coughs> and what the enemy sends or what the enemy shows you will seem to be like almost right. Let me explain it to you this way. When God first spoke to Adam, he said, son, I want you to look after this garden. And there's one tree that I don't want you to eat. And that is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When God spoke to them first, they saw that tree in a different way. Correct? But then what happened? When the enemy came and tempted them, Genesis chapter 3, verse number 6 says that when the serpent spoke to Eve, she saw the tree, the fruit to be good for food. Look at that. When you pay attention to these key terms, good, it seems to be like it was almost right. She saw the tree to be desirable, to make a person wise. That term desirable, once again, Seems like it was almost right. And it was pleasant to the eyes. Pleasant also shows like, it seems to be like it was almost right. But was it the right thing for them to do? Not at all. Amen. So discernment is one's ability to know what is right from what seems to be almost right. And in order for us to know or to discern and know what is right, the only person who can do that for us is the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I, one thing I like being a, a servant of God, being a pastor, is when you preach, in every sermon, you will end up with the Holy Spirit. You preach on any topic, right? You will end up with the Holy Spirit. And that is your safe zone. That is my safe zone. I don't know about you, but for me, the Holy Spirit is my safe zone. He is my comforter, he is my deliverer, he is my protector, he is my all in all today. So in order for you to be discerning, even to, for, even to discern demonic activity, before you start with other people, you must start with you, because you should be able to discern if there is any demonic activity inside of you. For some of you, I, I, I understand that, you know, sometimes... This kind of a message may, be not a me it may not be a message that you have heard before. But remember, Christians can very much come under demonic oppression. I can give you example after example. Even I, in, in our previous ministry, this was about uh, six years ago, this happened. A young boy who was about 18 at that time, he was in the worship team, he was born again suddenly committed suicide. So then you have the question, how come born-again believers 
suddenly end up committing suicide? So that answers the question. This is why it's important for us to maintain a healthy relationship with the Holy Spirit and keep building it daily on a daily basis. You need to invest. You need to sow into that relationship. How you sow into that relationship is number one, is with time. You need to set aside time. Without giving time, you can't build a relationship. For those of us who are married, after we got married, you know, we, we, every day we have to set aside time with our spouse. Without giving time, no relationship will last. So think about the time you give the Holy Spirit every day. I remember about a, a year ago, I was uh, usually in the morning hours, I spend about two to three hours when I'm in Sri Lanka. That time I was going to work also before I go to office. But one day I got a bit late to leave and uh, I was not able to spend that much time worshiping. And as I was just about to keep the guitar down, I heard the Holy Spirit telling me, son, can you give me five minutes more? Can you spend five minutes more? You know, that really pierced my heart. You know, that put tears into my eyes. And I said, I'm sorry, Holy Spirit. You and I, you need to think about the time we give the Holy Spirit. And for, the, for those of you who are involved in ministry, the time you go and minister to others is not the time you spend with the Holy Spirit. Don't get that conf no, Don't get that mixed up. The time you go and pray for people, the time you go and do deliverances, all that, that's good. That, that's what you are called to do. You need to do that. But that's not the time you spend with the Holy Spirit. That's where discipline comes in. If you have to wake up early, you wake up early and give the most important person time. Then with time comes communication. If you don't communicate, no, without communication, there is no relationship that can get built up. Now, after a wedding, the husband and wife can't look at each other and uh, you know, wait without saying anything. They will call the pastor saying, you know, they are dumb. We'll have to deliver them. So communication is important. How often do you talk to the Holy Spirit? After you pray, do you go quiet and say, Holy Spirit? Teach me. When you take the Bible to your hand, do you say, Holy Spirit, teach me? Do you read the Bible for the sake of reading the Bible? Communication is important. Then comes instructions. When, when you are communicating with the Holy Spirit, you will receive instructions. This is why even for those of you who are in ministry, when you go to minister to people, before you minister to them, the Holy Spirit will give you instructions. You know, sometimes, for example, when you go to pray for a person, the Holy Spirit may sometimes reveal a very specific cage where something happened to that person and say, at this age, this happened to you and that person will also confirm, saying, yes, something like this happened. The Holy Spirit will reveal. Remember, if you don't give the Holy Spirit time, if you don't communicate with him, you will be missing out on the most important and the powerful thing. And with this, I will bring this message to a close and that is revelation revelation you need to understand one of the the key assignments assigned over the holy spirit by god is to impart revelation one of the key tasks assigned over the Holy Spirit is to be the channel through which, through whom God imparts revelation into our spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 10 says, God imparts revelation or deeper things to us through his spirit. So we as children of God, in order for us to experience self-deliverance, to help others to be delivered, to discern demonic activity in other people. Sometimes when you go to a place, when you 
as you step into that place, the Holy Spirit will help you to discern and identify any kind of demonic presence that is there. Revelation is important. Revelation is important. The Holy Spirit will impart revelation. So the important thing is being a powerful child of God. Because like I said at the beginning, we are heading into perilous times. We are heading into turbulent times. If you think that the world has gone through enough and more you know, destructive things, don't be shocked, don't be surprised when you begin to see what, what the world is going to go through in the months that are ahead of us, especially in the next 28 months ahead. You will see so many things happening out there. Like I said last week in our previous session, don't think it's countries like Sri Lanka, you know, uh, Venezuela, and countries like that. You know, don't think that they are the only countries who are having food shortages and all that. A time will come where you know even these nations here, you know, they will also have a food shortage. So be prepared, be prepared, be informed, be informed. But you know, the, the, the biggest issue today is if Christians spend enough time reading this, right, you will know everything the world is going to go through. Because the Bible records everything the world went through, the world is going through, and also what the world is about to go through. It records every single prophecy. Now that the, the, the issue is, when Christians don't read their Bibles, they are not informed. When something happens out there in the world, or when you, when, when you hear a message like this, you get alarmed, think, oh, how is this going to happen? But little do you know that it's already mentioned in the Bible. So always, Stay, you know, live in your Bible. Hide God's word in your heart so that when disaster strikes, the word of God that you are hiding inside of your heart will not let you to be shaken. Amen. And today, as we are bringing this uh, time to a close time, just prompted by the Holy Spirit to pray for anyone. If you feel you know, um, one of the greatest requirements for deliverance is humility. This is something that I tell Christians. Okay, if we don't, uh, if we don't humble ourselves, that is a sign of pride. And by having pride, uh, pride, a child of God cannot experience deliverance. So, in a setting like this, in a session like this, remember. You are not being embarrassed just because you open up and say that you feel like you are being challenged. You feel like you are being oppressed by the enemy. So if you are a person, you, you are saying, you are, you are feeling that you are being oppressed by the enemy, we'd like to pray for you before we uh, close this session. 